there's quite a number of assets available via download. However, you're going to run into situations where you need to create your own. And I want to show a way to do that in this situation here. So one of the things that I can do is I can build models of, let's say, these tables. Now, one thing is I might want to get some dimensions from those. So if I actually turn on the real view indicator and label, that will turn on the scan locations from the recap model. If I double click on one, it will actually launch recap and give me what they call real view or the view of the photo that was taken at the scan. And see now I'm at the location of the scan. If I kind of orbit around, this is the real photo. And if I want to, I can use distances. I can even jump to, let's say, another location here, kind of orbit around. And let's say I wanted to get some distances off this table. I have some measuring tools here that I can use. I can use more of a orthographic. And let's say I want to get a x dimension try to get the edge of the table here try to get the edge of the table over here not always the easiest when you're working in these and or in a point cloud you can see it's about 1.7 meters this file still in meters if i switch over to let's say a y ortho and here across the width, we're about 1.75 meters across. And if I wanted to do a Z, we'll do it from the top to the floor, and we're about a meter there. So we can use that information to build the model in Inventor. Now that we've got our dimensions off our point cloud, we can actually model that up ourselves. So let's go ahead and, and begin doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it I want to start a new, just a standard part file would be fine. I'll start a 2D sketch on my XZ plane. I'll do a center rectangle. And this is where I could specify 1.75 meters by 1.75 meters. Or if I feel like I wanted to say, well, 3 feet by 3 feet, that would work as well. But either way, or not 3 feet by 3 feet, but 6 by 6. So there's this rectangle. What I'm going to do, though, is I also want to design the legs while I'm here. So I'm going to use a 2-point rectangle. specify a distance for this. So we'll say this is five inches wide. And because the diagonal is also on this diagonal, it works out that they'll be equal. And I'll do a quick collinear between these two. So now I've got my sketch created. So I'm going to stop my sketch. I'll go ahead and extrude my legs here. Let's say I want the table to be three feet tall, but I want the top to be maybe four inches thick. So I could say 36 minus four. And then I can create a new sketch on top of this. Two point rectangle. make these construction lines. So I can now go ahead and extrude this. We'll set this to four inches. Now one thing I also could do here to kind of set this up a little bit better, if I edit this feature, 
and make it a new body, it'll treat it separately than the legs, and then I can color them separately as well. So underneath here, I have solid number two. I can edit its properties and then call it something like cherry low natural low gloss. It'll color it differently than the rest. This one, I'll go to the properties and color it smooth black. Something else I can do is I can set this table up to be flexible or different sizes, just like the lathe was. So what I can do is I can go to my parameters. I'll call this length. Call this width. I'll actually have to add a numeric parameter called height. And I can add one, or actually not even have to add one, I can call this top thickness. And then here for this, I can actually set this up. So this is height or height minus top thickness. And so now this will all be set up so we can set these can all work right. And I actually have to set this value to 36. So now if I get this out of the way, you can see that I can change this to 40, 36. I can change the values here. If I wanted to go to six feet by six feet, I can do that. Let's go ahead and save this. So now that I have that set up, I can actually begin authoring the asset for the factory. So I'm going to go up here to factory. I'll go to the asset builder. So first off, it wants me to define a landing plane. So I'll pick the foot here as my landing plane. If I want to pick an insertion point, I could do that as well. It's looking pretty good. I'll go ahead and say OK to that. If I had equipment that was like a conveyor belt that had a connector, I could define that next, but I don't need to do that. What I can do though next, though, is I can set up the different variants. So I can go to Asset Variant. You'll see that no parameters are showing up here, and that's because I need to define those as key parameters. Actually, I don't really even need the top thickness. So now if I go back to asset variants, you'll see that all these show up as different parameters. I can say I want to add a variant. And I can add these columns. So I'll say I'll add another variant and say that this one's going to be five by five. And maybe it will be a little bit taller at 42 inches. Say OK. And now I have two variations of that model. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And once I've got it saved, I can go to Publish Asset. So I get this dialog box where it wants to know the name. I'll just list it as table. It wants to know if I want to save it locally, cloud, or in the vault. I'll save it in my user assets folder. Under 3D options, I can tell it if I wanted to simplify and what kind of level of quality I want to do that. Factory design utilities connect AutoCAD, Inventor, and Navisworks together. So if I wanted to, I could have it generate the Navisworks model. And then here, I can tell it to publish a 2D asset. And I can tell it I want to review the 2D representation, which will generate a 2D footprint while I do this. You can see here it gives me a 2D representation of that object, which is basically 
from the top down just looks like a square. That's fine. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say OK to that. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And it'll publish my 2D asset. So now that I have that, if I go ahead and say I finished the model builder and I open up the factory asset open up the factory asset browser under my user assets, there is now my table. And it's showing me that I've got two variations to it. So if I jump back to my model, I can locate that in the place there. So I go to my asset browser, I drag the table into the model. Try to locate it appropriately. Looks like I might need to rotate it a little bit or I can just leave it as is. Maybe I'll just slide it just a little bit over. There's a little bit uh, not aligned appropriately, so I can I can make mine square or I can make mine lined up with theirs. Right click and say done. And now my table is placed.